everybody. Today we're doing something a little different. Uh, this is Easter Sunday, so I'm not going to be doing a bunch of forging. I am just going to be showing you guys all the different stuff that we have done since the last shop update video, which was about seven months ago when we first built this shop. So we're going to show you guys how far the shop has come. Let's go. So if you guys saw the last shop update video, you would have noticed that there have been a lot of changes. So let's dive in a little deeper and I'll show you guys everything that's changed over the course of the winter. First things first, I have been fighting myself all winter trying to figure out exactly how to keep this beast secure. Um, if you've seen my videos, I tried silicone, I tried different types of silicone, and I finally decided on this. So the silicone kept breaking, drying out, and then cracking and snapping off. So what I've done here is I've actually chained it down. The chains, there's three of them. One is wrapped with both ends facing that way. The other is wrapped with both ends facing this way. And the other one intertwines both of them. After that, I secured the ones that are ran towards the ends tightly with some anchors into my wood base here that goes around the concrete. From there, I wire tied them together and I actually tightened the wire ties by twisting them and interlocked both sides over the other end. So this will not go anywhere, no matter how hard I pound on it in any direction now. And I don't have to worry about it coming loose. If anything ever does break, it'll be these little plywood particle board feet, and I can easily replace those. Just cut another little chunk and slap them on there. But I'm gonna give you guys a quick go around of what's on the actual stand itself, and then we'll talk tools. So aside from what's on the pegboard behind you, this is what I've got down here. I've got my block brush. It's just a plastic fake wood handle on a block brush. This used to be what I presume was a floor brush, but I made a new handle for it so I can keep my hand behind it when I'm brushing my steel instead of using something like this where my knuckles are in danger of hitting the hot metal. This is awesome. If you need a brush for your blacksmith shop, I highly recommend either making or getting a block brush and if you have to, fit a handle to it. You're a blacksmith, make a handle. What I have next is a flatter tool. This is something I, I made out of the head of a rock hammer. It's just a simple flat facing tool. And I've actually stuck this guy in and welded him on the other side. So that way I can actually hold it with my tongs here and have a working tool. I could have gone with a wood handle, but I just wanted something a little bit faster to grab with the tongs I use the most. Next, we have some calipers that I made. And what these are for is for measuring when hot so you can get an exact measurement. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about burning up a tape measure or a ruler and you can get exact measurements fast without actually having to take the time to go, oh, is it an inch and a quarter, an inch and eighth? What is it? If you've seen a lot of my videos, you would have seen this hot cut and you may have seen this one as well. This I purchased from another blacksmith. His name is Kurt Davis. He's also got a YouTube channel, go check him out. If you're looking at uh, vintage tools or all kinds of really cool old stuff. But I just threw a new handle on there and I use this guy quite a bit because it is very handy to just be able to hold down and use that like a chisel. Aside from that, I've got various hammers down here. Ball peens, uh, rock hammers, stuff that I use like a drift for axe eyes. This is just a simple little hammer that I actually just use like a top tool. I softened this end here, so this end is the hard part. When we were doing that, run around the base. You probably saw this as well. This is my axe eye drift for my bigger projects. You can use it for hammers as well. I prefer a square or diamond eye on stuff. It just looks interesting to me. And down here, my anvil stand is right where you are. This is usually right up next to it, but this is all my other various hot tools that I need access to quickly. This is a swage block. If you saw the video about visiting Blue Rose Forge for the grand opening and the blacksmith meetup, you will have seen me make this. Uh, it's a V-shaped and half round swage block that just goes in the hardy hole. I also picked this up while I was there. It's a guillotine tool for making tenons. Uh, you can also fuller with this um, or mark a guideline to fuller a sword with. I'm going to be making a couple of other dies for this here in the future so that way I can make full use of the skeleton of the guillotine here. Aside from that I've just got 
all kinds of punches and chisels, including base making chisels, like a half moon shape here. Just big regular chisel. And all my various little punches and this is a diamond head punch, but all my various little punches that I've made and chisels. Just on the other side of the anvil, we have all of our tongs and a bunch of other hammers that I use here, as well as some channel locks, which I like to use to twist. Probably gonna turn that into a twisting wrench or just turn that guy into a twisting wrench later. So that way I have a better twisting tool. I have my welder right there. I was just waiting for it to get warmer and drier before I use that. You'll also see that I've added a few shelves my safety equipment belts are still where they used to be. Um, but yeah, that's for my hats and apron, my glasses. So everything's close at hand. You'll notice this in a blacksmith shop. My forge is right here. My anvil's right there. My vice stand and my other anvils are right here. So I have everything within quick access because you want to strike while the iron is hot. For my grinding bench, the 4x36 has remained in the same place as it has always been. We have the welder there. He's gonna get unburied from all of my scrap wood and all my extra wood that I use for handles um, here very shortly because I'm gonna be practicing with this. I am a crappy welder, so I need to get better. So you're probably gonna see videos of me trying to get better and sucking at welding. Uh, it's just a little sentry. Down here, still quite a mess. I've got my angle grinder. I've got my skill saw, bunch of leather, bailing wire. It's kind of a mess right now from doing some projects recently but it will get cleaned up very shortly. I also have a spare light and my main light right here. Notice that I left my welding area open for when I do use the welder, getting rid of the skill saw, since I now have a little Delta Bench bandsaw. This thing has been awesome. It's not great at cutting metal, but an angle grinder will do the job just fine if you're good with it. And last but not least, we have our forge setup. I just put it on top of this box and elevated it, put some tile down and I actually have used some weight plates from an old scale that work great as forge doors because I can slide them back and forth I can lay them down and they close up right against there very well leaves a little bit of air gapping and they do have the holes in the front the nice thing about these weight plates is they have this little notch right here get a better look for you this little notch right here I can fit a pair of tongs around and move them around when they're hot so I don't have to worry about losing control of them. Right behind that, as you saw earlier, I've got my little vice bench and not much has changed with the little vice bench. I keep my scroll tongs on here. This is the cast iron anvil that I very first started with on the channel. Do not ever use a cast iron anvil for anything that you need rebound for. Don't ever use it for anything aside from like a cutting table, which is why I have a hold fast in here. I just use this for when I'm making faces on animal heads or when I'm doing various things like that. Lock it down, do all my punching and chiseling and cutting so I don't mess up the face on my good anvil. And back behind me, as you'll notice, I've thrown up an American flag. Sorry on the footage, it is in reverse. Uh, it is properly set up. My camera just mirrors everything. We have a couple of different things up here. We got the punch daggers just because I thought they would look cool next to the first sword that I ever refurbished. That was actually my grandfather's. I got it when I was a child and beat it to hell, busted it up, and fixed it as one of my first projects. Got a viking sword here that I got as a rusty mess and is now a functional blade. We'll get more to that here in a sec. It's a cross I made a long time ago. Uh, got it all assembled and it's hanging up there. Got a knife here. This is actually a reminder to myself. This is something you'll notice in a blacksmith shop. I cracked the handle scales on it when I was putting it together. Since the glue had art, I mean the epoxy had already hardened, I figured it'd be too much work and probably ruin the knife to try and tear it all apart and redo it. So I left it as is and hung it on the wall as a reminder not to wench down too tight when I'm putting handle scales on. These guys up here, I just didn't feel like I, they were worthy of selling on my shop. They're just little saw blade knives that I played with an angle grinder. This was a sword blade I was going to make into a sword, but decided that since it was basically just an old machete I had reground, wasn't worth the time. Ugly knife over here is actually a gleaning tool that I use <laughs> to get rid of weeds around the area when they grow. And then these are just a couple of woodworking tools, a flux spoon, and my favorite hammer. That's a special place in my shop. It's right where I can reach it, right next to my forge. And this is a little bit better of a close up on some of the stuff that was just hanging next to the hammer. I've got a little shop knife got a wood carving ch uh, chisel, got a pick, a gouging chisel, as well as 
a flux spoon for forge welding purposes. There will be more tools going underneath the flag all the way across as I make them. Uh, these are just what I had time to make recently. So this is that Viking sword that I had restored a while ago. Um, I don't know if I ever get you guys a close up on it, aside from maybe a short video. It's got a little bit of rust on it, but that's okay. It's been sitting in a storage room unoiled for a long time. So I figure, why not do some cutting with it? Just for those of you that are still sticking around after this boring update video. Still sharp as ever though. Split that right in half. This guy's still standing too, he's still got water in him. Now we've just got a little milk bottle here. <laughs> Screwed that second cut up to hell and back. So here is the close up of that Viking sword that I restored. Like I said, it has a little bit of rust on it, but I gave it a mustard forced patina. So it uh, looks like fake Damascus. Cause you know, Viking Uthberg swords tended to be a Damascus blade. This is a one handed sword and it took me a couple days to restore it. But this is one of my more successful restoration projects in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think of everything in the comments below. And that does it for today's video. I hope you guys all had a very happy Easter. I know I did with spending time with the family and filming this video. This will probably be coming up the day after Easter because I have to edit it and it's a busy day. So God bless. Love you guys. Stay safe. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. And if you're looking for a custom made blade, check out Hooker's Blades on Etsy.